Atma Namaste guys, Kristen Arlong, Life Enhancing Consulting, giving you a big and beautiful shout out on this Wednesday evening. Uh, I'm jumping on real quick before I head over and I have some protein waffles with fruit and peanut butter and honey. It's one of my jams, <clears throat> one of the things I like to eat, to bulk up, to add my protein for the day. And I want to jump on real quick. As you guys know, we do these live streams typically in the evenings, and we talk about three topics, energy, healing, meditation, and practical spirituality. Autumn, Atma Namaste, good to have you on live, girl, I love it. And I'm always thinking how I can add value to you guys. So for instance, right below this video, if you're on Facebook, we just finished doing the weekly newsletter, which is basically a quote from my teacher, Grandmaster Cho Koksui, the modern founder of Pranic Healing and Arhatic Yoga. So it's a quote and then the breakdown of the quote and how you can apply the lessons in that quote to improve the quality of your day-to-day -day life, right? So that's right below this video if you're on Facebook watching this. And um, we do these live streams each and every day to add value to you in some way, shape, or form. I try to do my best to make them entertaining, educational, empowering. Um, so. That being said, I thought to myself, who wants to be rich? Who wants to be prosperous? Who wants to be more abundant in their lives? And most people will raise their hand and say, me, 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 right? Now there are some people that go, well, if I was rich, it would make me corrupt. If I was rich, I would give all my money to charity. If um, I don't need a lot of money, et cetera, et cetera. So, Many, many years ago, my teacher, Grandmaster Cho Kuksui, who was a very successful businessman, a multi, multi-millionaire, he thought to himself, well, I've noticed that a lot of spiritual people tend to have money problems, financial problems. Why is that? Because his thinking was, if you can help somebody that has a big heart, that has the will to do good, to help alleviate the pain, the sorrow, and suffering of other people, wouldn't it make sense to give that person a tremendous amount of resources and prosperity, right? So if you're a good person right now, and somebody gave you $100 million, don't you think that would be an opportunity to do even more goodwill in the world with $100 million versus not or without $100 million? So he created this course or class called Kriya Shakti. So Kriya means movement, Shakti means energy. And the way the teacher explains it is, Kriya Shakti is power through purification, meaning as we purify ourselves spiritually, mentally, emotionally, etherically of poverty consciousness, lack, scarcity, fear, anxiety, all these programs around money, as we remove those programs, we are empowered to be more prosperous, to be more abundant, to be more successful. So over my 14 years in pranic healing, I've seen many, many people take the principles of Kriya Shakti to become very prosperous, to be very successful in their lives. And there's one principle that I can publicly share. The other principle is you actually have to learn in the class. But there's one principle that I can share um, that I've had the opportunity to experience this firsthand with people here in Denver. For about two and a half years, we were holding a prosperity meditation where mostly business owners attended this class because it was in the middle of the day, so they would take time off from their business to come to this meditation that was designed and built around being more prosperous. And so we would give a short lecture at the beginning of the class, then we would do an hour long meditation. And even when people were sitting and doing the meditations, there would be dings going off on their cell phones about invoices being paid, money being deposited into their bank accounts, and I was like, whoa, this is really intense. This stuff really works, right? Even though I've been practicing it, and I've seen it numerous times in my own life, it's always refreshing and invigorating to see it materialize in the lives of other people. So the one principle that I wanted to share with you guys today, if, if you're looking to be more prosperous, if you're looking to be rich, if you're looking to be a financial pillar in your community, is this very simple principle. Now, if you've ever done the Twin Hearts Meditation with us, we use the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi as the format for the meditation to activate the heart and activate the crown. And if you remember one of the stanzas of the meditation, it says, it is in the giving that we receive. 
it is in the giving that we receive. So, along that line of reasoning, if you want to have more money in your life, what must you give? Ding, 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 light bulbs going off, is money. If you want more love in your life, you must be loving. If you want more friendship in your life, you must be friendly to others. If you want more passion in your life, you must give others passion, right? So this principle, called the principle of abundance, I can thoroughly say the people who have applied this principle consistently and persistently in their lives, their finances have improved greatly. But the people who have been having difficulties in their finances that do not apply this principle, their finances either stay the same or get worse over time. So what does that look like, the principle of abundance? It simply means every dollar you make, every paycheck that you receive, whether it's through your job, whether it's through your business, whether it's through a windfall of something in your life, is you take 10%, 10%, and you give that 10% to a spiritual organization or charity of your choice. Now, you might be saying, well, that doesn't make any sense. How can I get more money by giving money away? Well, if you've never practiced the principle, I can understand how that would be difficult. But for instance, if you smile at somebody in the street that's walking by you, what is the tendency for them to do back? To smile, right? Typically, if you smile, they're not gonna frown. So that's a very simplistic way of looking at it, that if you, whatever like energy you want in life, you must first give it. So it's kind of like looking at a fireplace, and you're saying, fireplace, I want you to give me heat, but you don't put any wood, be Bob, and I'm stay, good to have you on. If you don't put any wood in the fireplace, then heat can't be given to you. So whatever it is that you want, you must first give. So if you want money in your life, you have to sow the seeds of money. You have to sow the seeds of prosperity. Now, sci uh, tithing is also a science, not just an art form. And the science behind tithing is actually taught in the Kriya Shakti class by Grandmaster Chua Kuksui. So this is my recommendation to you. If you're looking to be more prosperous, if you're looking to be more materially and financially wealthy in your life, give. Every single month, Give 10% of your net earnings to some spiritual group or spiritual organization of your choice. Now you might be saying, well, you're saying this because you're benefiting from it, right? Like, what's your spiritual organization? Lori, I'm gonna say, what's your spiritual organization that you're going to recommend? I'm not gonna recommend any spiritual organization. I'm gonna leave that to your own consciousness to choose which one resonates with you. And I want you to do it for at least 90 days, which is three months. So for the next three months, every dollar that you make, the net of that, I want you to give 10% to that spiritual charity or spiritual organization of your choice. And do it for 90 days and then assess what do you notice happening in your finances. And you might be saying, well, wait a minute. If I give money, shouldn't I get money back immediately? No, that's not how it works. If you plant corn, does corn crop up the next day or is there a growing season? There's a growing season. The same thing with um, money and materialism. As you give, there's a growing season. So there's a Chinese proverb that says, when is the best time to plant a tree? The answer is 20 years ago. When is the second best time to plant a tree? Right now. So you can theorize, you can use uh, mental gymnastics to justify why that doesn't make sense. Christian, it doesn't make sense. If I give money, I'm going to get more money. That's okay. You can use mental gymnastics and you're going to stay stuck right where you're at. Or, or as Master Cho would say, you can use intelligent evaluation, you can experiment, and you can make your own conclusion, right? Because uh, I've learned many, many years in pranic healing that it's about discernment. It's not about buying something hook, line, and sinker just because a spiritual teacher said it, just because it's in a holy book, just because 
you had this profound insight while you were meditating in the stillness. You have to validate something to make it either true or false. So my challenge, my recommendation to you is for the next 90 days, for the next three months, give 10% of your net earnings to some spiritual organization or cause of your choice and see after, 30, uh, after 90 days, see what happens with your finances. It sounds so simple, which it is, but I have consistently and persistently seen people who have financial challenges not practice that simple principle. Right? So I'll leave you with this. Grandmaster Cho Kokusui says, the best medicine for sick finances is to tithe. The best medicine for sick finances is to tithe. And actually there's a beautiful story, you can look it up on YouTube about Anthony Robbins, the business coach and motivational strategist, who talked about, I think he was 19 or 20 years old at the time, he was living in, um, I believe it was Newport Beach, California. This is in the 80s. And he had very little resources, very little money in his life. And at this point in time, he couldn't even figure out how to pay his rent. And he had something like $37 or so left to his name. So instead of staying stuck at his house and being miserable and meditating on everything that's wrong with him, he thought, let me go out for a walk. And he goes, goes for a walk on the beach, on the, on the uh, boardwalk. And he sees this restaurant and he sees this little kid all dressed to the nines, probably like seven or eight years old, opening the door for his mother. And they were both, uh, you know, he pulled the chair out for his mother and the mother sits down. And, and this little boy was looking to treat his mother to a beautiful, um, a beautiful dinner or a beautiful lunch. And um, Anthony Robbins at that moment in time wanted to help the, the little boy contribute to his mother. So he gave the last bit of his money, you know, let's say $30 or so, to this little boy, and then he went on his way. And he says in that moment he had one of the most exhilarating experiences of his, of his life, and he had this surge of generosity. And the next day, I believe it was the next day, again, go to YouTube and check it out. The next day, he ended up receiving a check from a friend of his that owed him a lot of money that was able to pay like two and a half months worth of his rent. And you go, well that's just coincidental, that's just an anecdotal story, come on, like I'm smarter than that. And it's like, you know what, you might be smarter than that. But here's the thing, spiritual laws are spiritual laws, just like the law of gravity. It's not called the opinion of gravity and the law of karma, it's not called the opinion of karma, it's a law. Whatever you plant, you reap. Now, moving forward, Anthony Robbins is worth over $500 million. And he, at, in his late 30s, lost everything. But because of his tremendous generosity, all of that and much, much more came back to him. And as of, to my knowledge, in 2016, his organization was able to feed over 100 million, Brandy, I'm a namaste. His organization was able to feed over 100 million people in the United States. So the amount of karma, that good karma, prosperity karma that that generated for him, his family, and his organization and businesses is astronomical. It's almost unimaginable. So again, my encouragement to each and every one of you, if you are looking to be more prosperous in your life, try this experiment out of, for the next 90 days tithing or donating 10% of your net income to a spiritual organization or charity of your choice. And after the 90 days, notice what has changed in your bank account. I hope that helps. If you're looking for deep and profound healing around prosperity in your life, you're more than welcome to reach out to christianrlong.com slash services, christianrlong.com slash services and schedule a distant a pranic healing session with me. We can do it around prosperity, we can do it around relationships, we can do it around spiritual growth and development. It's really dependent upon what it is that you require at this moment in your life. Harita, Atma Namaste, always good to have you on. And Lori says, you are correct. Again, 
the teachings that I'm sharing with you are not my teachings. They're the teachings of my teacher, Grandmaster Cho Kuksu, who I am indebted to, who I am extremely humbled by. Bruno, Atma Namaste. I think we'll be seeing each other for the Halloween party. I gotta look at the date again. So many invites, so many different events on Facebook, Eventbrite, um, emails, just all around, Messenger. So I'll leave you guys with that information for tonight. I hope it helps. Please keep me in the loop. Keep me posted over the next 90 days on how your finances are going from here or here or here and even higher. Any questions, reach out to me directly at christianrlong at gmail.com or go to the website christianrlong.com. And I look forward to connecting with you guys very, very soon. I'm off to make some dinner. This is Christian R. Long, Life Enhancement Consultant. Have a beautiful Wednesday night, a beautiful week, and a beautiful life. Atma, namaste. Bye-bye.